हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ डिजाइन ऑफ स्टील स्ट्रक्चर वी आर डीलिंग विद यूनिट नंबर फोर्थ बी पार्ट डिजाइन ऑफ लैटरली अनसपोर्टेड बीम सो इन द प्रीवियस फ्यू वीडियोज वी हैव सीन डिजाइन ऑफ लैटरली सपोर्टेड बीम्स वी हैव सीन वॉट इज द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ लैटरली सपोर्टेड एंड अनसपोर्टेड बीम्स वॉट आर द डिजाइन स्टेप्स दैट आर टू बी एडप्टेड इन केस ऑफ लैटरली सपोर्टेड बीम्स एंड वॉट आर द यूजल चेक्स एडप्टेड इन केस ऑफ फ्लेक्जरल मेम्बर डिजाइन दैट इज Uh, check for your web buckling check for web crippling and deflection check so in this particular video we are going to highlight design of laterally unsupported beams so in the introductory lecture of flexural members we have seen the top compression flange if laterally supported in that cases it is coming under the category of laterally supported type of beams this particular lateral support is restraining the torsional buckling of your compression flange if suppose that particular compression flange is not laterally supported and it is capable of the lateral torsional buckling for that particular compression flange such beams are coming under laterally unsupported beams so the examples in case of laterally supported beams are nothing but your gantry girders or you sometimes your plate girders so lateral supports usually for this particular cross section is not there and therefore these are coming under the category of laterally unsupported type of beams so uh, initially uh, there are some situations where beams girders have no lateral support or bracing over a part or hole of their span so the simple example already we have discussed that is regarding your gantry girders and for for such laterally unsupported and unbraced beams the compression flange may buckle sideways causing lateral torsional buckling so up till now in the beams design what we have seen we have seen the beams were laterally supported and this particular beams was not subjected to any torsional buckling therefore there is no reduction in the strength value of your beam and we have calculated the strength by considering total yield strength fy value as 250 mp so for uh, plastic and compact section your design bending strength md is calculated as beta b into plastic section modulus multiplied by yield strength fy divided by partial safety gamma m0 but now in case of laterally unsupported beams this particular yield strength fy is going to be reduced and this reduced value is now termed as your fbd so in the formula you can observe that md is given as beta b into plastic section modulus multiplied by fbd where your fbd value is design bending compressive stress obtained uh, uh, in table number 13a and 13b depending upon the type of cross section whether it is a rolled section or whether it is a welded section based on that your fbd value is design bending compressive stress so here this design bending compressive stress is calculated as a chi factor that is chi lt into fy divided by gamma m0 so here this chi lt value is multiplying factor and this multiplying factor is reducing the strength correct reducing the strength fy value because of lateral torsional buckling so either you may calculate this fbd value directly by using table number 13a 13b and fcrb cal calculation from table number 14 or you may go with this particular procedure mentioned in this particular table that is calculation of chi lt factor or phi lt factor lambda lt factor all these values can be calculated and based on that your lateral torsional buckling constraint is to be considered by calculating critical moment mcr so this following are some of the situations that is bending is about major axis the next is section is hollow or solid sections or in many cases your major axis bending that is less slenderness ratio lambda lt value is less than 0.4 if this three particular cases are coming into picture in that cases that particular beams are to be designed as laterally unsupported type of beams so we'll continue with this only so here your value is to be calculated for elastic lateral torsional buckling denoted by mcr value this is as per clause number 8.2.2.1 page number 54 of your is 800 page number 54 where your critical value of moment mcr is calculated so similar value can be calculated using your fcrb calculations also directly you can calculate that fcrb factor that is non slenderness ratio factor 
or it may be also called as your extreme fiber uh, extreme fiber bending compressive stresses corresponding to elastic lateral torsional buckling moment mcr so similar calculation we have made in case of compression members also according to your buckling classes you have defined a b c d as four buckling classes and for this four buckling classes just by directly referring table number 9 a b c d you have calculated directly the design compressive stress f c d value so either you may go by this particular numerical process for calculation of your fbd value or directly you may refer this particular tables so initially for calculation of your extreme fiber bending compressive stress fcrb you refer table number 14 and for fbd calculation you refer table number 13a and 30b so likewise also the calculations can be made here important thing you need to remember is regarding your effective length of lateral torsional buckling and for that cases your effective slenderness ratio is to be calculated that is kl effective length divided by least radius of variation about the axis either the bending axis may be major axis or minor axis and for that value calculation of uh, slenderness ratio and from slenderness ratio your extreme fiber bending stress fcrb is to be calculated from table number th uh, 14 and that value is to be considered as table number 13a and 30b value according to your cross section so alpha lt value for rolled section point 21 and alpha lt value for welded section point 49 according to this two your table number either 13a or 13b is to be adopted so here the important thing to understand is for a given cross section initially you calculate effective length and that effective length calculation is done based on this table number 15 page number 58 you can refer this table for calculating the effective length now this particular effective length for any flexural member is depending upon the restraint provided that is restraint for your torsional and second restraint is for your warping so based on these two conditions your effective length for normal loading condition is to be considered destabilizing condition is not to be considered here so for normal condition if your torsional restraint is fully restrained and warping restraint is for a single flange both flanges or only compression flange or it is for restraint provided for both the flanges so these particular conditions are to be matched with the statement of numerical and based on that you need to calculate your effective length for normal conditions for example i will discuss one condition usually your torsional restraint is fully restrained and only compression flange is fully restrained in that case you consider 0.75 value if both the flanges are fully restrained you go with 0.8 value so this particular numerical statement related with the conditions of restraint at support for torsional and warping will be mentioned and based on that you select your effective length value for that effective length now divide it by the uh, radius of gyration and for that radius of gyration after dividing calculate your value of slenderness ratio this slenderness ratio value is directly put into table number 14 so you can see table number 14 on page number 57 where your slenderness ratio kl by r is given vertically and according to h by tf ratio that is overall depth of section divided by thickness of flange value according to this your ratios are given so initially calculate slenderness ratio kl by r by considering effective length from that particular table number 15 in second step calculate fcrb by interpolation if you are getting value intermediate between the given values you go for interpolation and after that for your fbd calculations you go for either table 13a or 13b so table 13a page number 55 and page uh, table 13b page number 56 are to be adapted for so first alpha lt is 0.21 for rolled section and table number 13b is to be added for welded section so from this you can observe the table your value of fcrb which was previously calculated from table number 14 is to be considered here and horizontally it is divided depending upon your yield strength fy250 value so directly go to page number column number 250 fy value and fcrb calculated on page number 55 and calculate your fbd value using this your fbd will be calculated and after calculating your fbd final formula for calculating your design bending strength is this one that is beta b similar you need to go with the classification of cross section then plastic section modulus from anexure h 
पेज नंबर वन थर्टी एट एंड फाइनली द कैलकुलेटेड एफ बी डी इज गोइंग टू गिव अस डिजाइन बेंडिंग स्ट्रेंथ फॉर आवर सेक्शन सो शॉर्ट डिफ्रेंसिएशन यूनिट टू अंडरस्टैंड रिगार्डिंग लैटरली सपोर्टेड एंड अनसपोर्टेड लैटरली सपोर्टेड बीम इज गोइंग टू गिव अस फुल स्ट्रेंथ एफ वाई वैल्यू टू फिफ्टी बट देर विल बी रिडक्शन इन दिस पर्टिकुलर एफ वाई वैल्यू बाय सर्टन फैक्टर काय वैल्यू काय इज अ रिडक्शन फैक्टर दैट इज टू बी मल्टीप्लाइड विथ एफ बी डी वैल्यू दैट इज टू बी सॉरी दैट इज टू बी मल्टीप्लाइड विथ योर एफ वाई वैल्यू इन ऑर्डर टू कैलकुलेट योर डिजाइन बेंडिंग स्ट्रेस एफ बी डी सो इफ प्लास्टिक सेक्शन मॉड्यूलस एंड एफ बी डी वैल्यू एंड योर बीटा बी इज नोन यू कैन कैलकुलेट द डिजाइन बेंडिंग स्ट्रेंथ फॉर लैटरली अनसपोर्टेड टाइप ऑफ बीम्स सो दिस वॉज शॉर्ट इंट्रोडक्शन टू लैटरली अनसपोर्टेड टाइप ऑफ बीम्स In the next videos, we will be dealing with some of the numericals related with laterally unsupported type of beams. So thank you, thank you very much.